I want to talk today about who Jesus is as the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to try to keep this short because I have a, a longer video that comes from a more philosophical standpoint. It's actually going to be all audio and put pictures and scriptures over it because the video portion of it didn't work. But it, like I say, it's a more of a philosophical standpoint, which is the way I really enjoy teaching. I just realized that it's more effective maybe to at least lay the groundwork of scriptures. And this is all scripture that I'm, that I'm going to have here to indicate my belief that Jesus himself, the individual Jesus, is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to start with the Old Testament in Exodus 4.12, when we're talking about Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. That's God speaking to Moses. And interestingly enough, right after that, Moses says, could you just send someone else? I thought that's kind of ironic because we're talking about two different belief systems here. Some people say that God didn't come here. And some people like me believe that God himself came here. All of God, the person of God, the man that God became. That's what I believe. God's wrath was kindled against Moses because Moses didn't want to do it, so to speak. And I think that also can give you a clue as to why it was necessary for God to do it, because no one could do it. Moses and, and all the prophets basically came to show that there was no one that could actually do it. So that's why the writer of Hebrews pointed it out. So Jesus is so much better than these people. He's, Moses, you know, he wasn't disrespecting him. He's just saying that there's only one that's better than Moses and the angels and the prophets and the law and everyone. And that's Jesus. And how could he be any less than all of God? There's only one that's good. Jesus himself said it. So we have that. He said, I, I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what to say. Now look at these three scriptures. These are all of the same conversation, records of the same conversation slash event in the New Testament. These are the words of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew 10, 20 says, this is all Jesus' words. He says, for it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you. Mark 13, 11, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Luke 21, 15, I will give you a mouth and wisdom. I know I'm just taking a very short portion of each of those verses. He's talking about when the persecution comes, he's saying, don't premeditate on what you're going to say. And then he tells you who's going to talk for you. The same exact conversation, your father, the Holy Spirit, me. Now he's not telling you who knows who's going to be speaking for you. It might be one of us, it might be me, it might be the other guy, the Holy Spirit, or maybe dad, I don't know. No, he's telling you who he is. There is no they involved here. He's telling you who the Holy Spirit is because we are to take the Bible in its completeness. There's no, there's no inconsistencies in it. There's just a fullness that maybe one book indicates one part of the story and it leaves another out. But it, you put the whole thing together to get the whole story. This is not an inconsistency. This is not a contradiction. It's simply telling us, Jesus is simply telling us through his written word, who he is. The next scripture is Matthew 20, 20. And Jesus says, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, moving on here in John, John verse, uh, 14, verses 17 and 18, in the World English Bible, it says, The Spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive, for it doesn't see him, neither knows him. You know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will will come to you. You see that back and forth there? He's all going, him, I, me, you know, back and forth. This is something Jesus did a lot. I want to put this side by side, if you can, in your mind. Remember, the spirit of truth, right before that, in the same chapter, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the spirit of truth is just Jesus' spirit. That's what it is. So he just said, for it doesn't see him, neither knows him. You know him, for he lives with you. That means right now he was living with them and will be in you. He wasn't in us yet because the whole, he hadn't come back as the Holy Spirit of God yet. And he says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. That's very personal. If it was another person, if it was another individual, he would have said, 
he won't leave you comfortless. He won't leave you orphans. He will come to you. Oh, he's making it clear who he is. John 14, 25 and 26. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. That word yet present or uh, being present means in a given state. He's saying present in the current state I'm in. He's not saying I'm going away and, and sending another person. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. John 15, 26. But when the Comforter is come, remember I just said that, but the Comforter, when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So one verse in 14 says, the Father will send in my name, and then in 15 he says, who I will send to you from the Father. He's saying, when when I leave, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to remind you of all the things I told you, and you're going to know that it's me because of what I tell you, because you know my voice. You're my sheep, and you're going to understand because this is what only my sheep here this is why i'm here to tell you this is between you and me and that's what god uh, offers to us he offers a, a ever deepening relationship that is more and more profound and more intimate every day again the subject is jesus is the holy spirit and this these you in romans will make that as clear as clear can be and eight verse nine in the bible in basic english it says you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if the spirit of God is in you, but if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is not one of his. If the spirit of God is not the spirit of Christ, he should have just said it the same way both times, one or the other. That makes it clear. Jump down to verse 11. If the spirit of God who raised Jesus from death lives in you, he, he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of his spirit in you. Next scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 14. In the KJV, it says, And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. The Lord. There's only one Lord, right? The Lord Jesus Christ is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from everything, freedom from death, freedom from condemnation, freedom from guilt, freedom from shame, freedom from the enemy. You just have freedom. God raised up the Lord. The Lord is the spirit. Then Jesus says in John 2, 19, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. I will raise it up. Who raised up this? Who raised up Jesus? The spirit. Who? God. Who? Jesus. That's right. The same one. There is no them. There is no they. They aren't a they. He is a him. He is the, the spirit. He is God. He is the one who raised himself up. That's why he said he would raise himself up. In no uncertain terms. There's no way you can look at that and say, well, he's being poetic or something, saying, I will raise up this temple. He was talking about the temple of his body, whose we are now. Through faith in Christ. Now you're the temple of God. You're the temple of Jesus Christ. You have the spirit of Jesus living in you. That's why he did it himself. So he could be with you. That's the whole point of this. God wants to be with you. How do you suppose it's going to work if if he's doing having someone else do something so that someday the two of you can be together? No, he wants to be with you. And he is, if you have faith in him, he comes to live with you, literally. That's why we know Jesus is the spirit, because he's here, and I don't see him. I don't see him at all. And that's pretty much it. So watch for the next video. Uh, please consider that and watch that. It's a lot different. I am going to include scriptures on the drop down on this one and on here and on the next one to follow. Thanks for listening, and please subscribe. In Jesus' name, amen.